if you're buying a home with an HOA in place, it's kind of a catch 22. You know, I, I've talked to and work with clients who absolutely don't want an HOA. They don't want any type of HOA. They don't want to pay the extra monthly bill. Um, and then I've talked with clients who absolutely want to have an HOA. And the reason for that is because HOAs will typically keep home values up in your neighborhood. They will keep your homes, you know, in good condition. They have rules about, you know, your neighbor painting their home lime green, things of that nature. And so they will control uh, those types of things to where you can keep property values up. So it could be a good thing to have the HOA. But I also understand the, the opposite side of that. And, you know, you don't want the extra bill. Hello and welcome to the Homeowner Prep Podcast. I'm your host, Eric Alon, and this podcast was created to provide real-world advice and accountability for first-time homebuyers. We'll be interviewing industry experts, providing some how-tos, and talking with first-time homebuyers about their personal experiences. If that sounds interesting to you, please be sure to subscribe, and if you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the little bell to be notified when new episodes release. Now let's dive into today's episode. Welcome to the Homeowner Prep Podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about a topic specifically addressed to um, first-time home buyers and the additional costs of home ownership. Um, you know, our goal and what we do is really to prepare you, try to stay a step ahead of what to expect. And so when it comes to home ownership, there may be additional costs there that you weren't expecting or didn't know about. And so we want to dive into just a few of those today. So that way you're prepared when you decide to get the keys to your first home and you're not surprised when the bill comes. <laughs> so, you know, we want to dive into a few of these and definitely, you know, there are additional ones depending on the type of home you're buying and where you're buying. And so, you know, you can always reach out to us for more information about your particular situation. But these are some of the overarching additional costs when it comes to owning your own place. The first one is actually paying utilities. So if you're going from say an apartment to your first home, you may not be familiar with having to pay for water, sewer, and trash. These are considered like, like your more count, your county utilities, things of that nature. And when you're a homeowner, you're now responsible for paying. If you rented a single family home, you may have paid some additional costs for maybe the water or the trash, or maybe in your rental agreement, you are responsible for all three. Um, but again, if you're coming from an apartment, you may not know what these are. So your water, sewer, and trash bills here in California, uh, specifically Southern California, we get a bill every other month um, for our county utilities that are due. They're roughly about $45, $50 um, you know, on each bill. So $25 to $30 a month, particularly Um and some of the neighborhoods here in San Diego County. And it's going to be different for you wherever you are. So you may get billed monthly, you may get billed once a year, um, but you will have some utility bills for your water usage, um, the sewer. Um, if, if you're connected to sewer, you may not be. Um, you may be on a septic tank. Um, and then you're also going to have the trash, you know, the trash that you're going to pay for, for them to come by and pick it up and things of that nature. So utilities will be an additional cost that you will have, depending on where you're at. Again, um, it's a, it may differ in how you're being billed for those and what those costs are. But be ready to pay for your water, sewer and trash some way or another. <laughs> the second thing that you may have is actually dealing with your yard. So if you have a front yard or a backyard, let's say you're buying a single family home, um, there may be additional costs there that you may that you weren't expecting. For instance, if you're buying new construction in a single family home, chances are when you buy that home, you're going to have nothing but dirt in the backyard. They don't come with the backyards already done. Um, they come with basically a blank canvas for you to do what you want to do with the backyard. Now, if you have an HOA, they will say that you have a certain time frame to get your backyard done. And whatever you decide to do will have to be approved by the HOA. And we'll dive into HOAs in just a second. But if you do have a yard that's a blank slate that is just dirt, you're going to want to get that uh, done to your liking as quickly as possible. One, you don't want to start getting fined by the HOA for not having it done. But two, that dirt and dust really flies around back there. 
um, gets everything dirty, including the side of your home. You know, if you have like stucco or anything like that, you know, it can start to stain the stucco. So you're going to want to do something with that backyard as quickly as possible. Uh, and just doing a simple backyard, you know, it may cost you thousands of dollars just to lay sod or to, you know, lay pavers or whatever you want to do. And so there's not going to be sprinkler systems in, you know, things of that nature. So you're going to have to really pay that additional cost just for the installation. So that's in one scenario. Again, new construction, blank slate, doing the yard yourself, there will be additional costs in the thousands of dollars to get that done. Now, if you're going to buy a resale home um, and there's already a backyard and a front yard there, they're going to require maintenance. And so with maintenance, maintenance costs, um, that could cost you maybe 50 bucks a month, uh, $75 a month, depending on size of the, of the yard. And if they're going to do a front and backyard, there may be an additional cost to have somebody come out and do your yard once a week and once every other week, whatever the case may be. Again, it's going to differ depending on size of the yard and where you're at, but somebody's going to have to maintain that yard. And if you're not going to pay somebody to do it, then you're going to have to do it. <laughs> so again, you're the homeowner. It's your property. You want to take care of it. So again, whether you're going to pay somebody to come out and take care of that yard on a monthly basis, that's a new monthly bill. Or if you're going to now buy the equipment to take care of it yourself, a lawnmower or whatever else, weed whackers, whatever you need to get it done, you know, then there's some additional costs there. So don't forget about the yard. The yard will have additional costs. I mentioned briefly about HOAs. Um, HOAs, especially new construction, you typically will have an HOA. If you're buying a home with an HOA in place, it's kind of a catch-22. You know, I, I've talked to and worked with clients who absolutely don't want an HOA. They don't want any type of HOA. They don't want to pay the extra monthly bill. Um, and then I've talked with clients who absolutely want to have an HOA. And the reason for that is because HOAs will typically keep home values up in your neighborhood. They will keep your homes, you know, in good condition. They have rules about, you know, your neighbor painting their home lime green, things of that nature. And so they will control uh, those types of things to where you can keep property values up. So it could be a good thing to have the HOA. But I also understand the, the opposite side of that. And, you know, you don't want the extra bill. You know, you don't want somebody telling you what to do. Um, somebody coming and, and finding you for the way that your home looks or, you know, um, telling you what you can't do with your home. <laughs> so I definitely get it. Um, and so you have to make that decision yourself, it, whether you want to have an HOA or not. And also, you know, how much you're going to want to pay in HOA fees. If you're buying a condo in downtown of whatever city you're in, chances are your HOA fees are going to be a lot higher than if you're on the outskirts or suburbs. Um, and if you even have an HOA in place or not, you know, so they can range all the way from zero dollars. And I've seen thousands of dollars a month um, for HOA and maintenance fees. So just depends on the type of home you're buying. Make that decision. Know what your HOA fees are ahead of time. Um, so ask your agent, you know, are there HOA fees? How much are they? How often are they billed? You know, is it a monthly bill or quarterly? Um, and what does it cover? You know, you want to know what does it uh, cover? So that way you say, okay, well, I don't have to take care of the yard or I don't have to take care of this. Or, you know, maybe my home insurance is going to be less because now they're taking care of the exterior of the building. Some HOAs may take care of the water and sewer and trash. You know, so now you don't have that those county utility bills, as, we, as I mentioned before. So it can offset those costs. So even if you have a $50 HOA, but it's taking care of some of those other items that you're going to have to pay for anyway, then it's a benefit because, again, they're keeping the property values up, but they're also taking care of those responsibilities that you would have no matter what. So HOAs, again, it's a catch-22 to each their own. Obviously, you know, there's pros and cons for HOAs for sure. One of the things that you have to understand about HOAs before we move on is that HOAs actually have the ability to foreclose on homes. So this is very, very important. Your HOA dues need to be paid, paid on time, and you don't want to get in the rears. If you get in the rears of your HOA, they actually can foreclose on you um, and sell your home as, as a forced sale. And so you want to know that ahead of time. You want to make sure that if you do have an HOA, again, you're finding out that information from your agent and you want to pay that bill on time every single month. You don't want to fall behind. Uh, you don't want to get on the bad side. And one last point I will make about HOAs is if you do have one in place, I would encourage you to get involved. Know what's, what they're talking about in those meetings. 
Um, sit on the board if you want, if you have the time to realize that you're going to hear a lot of complaints. That's just kind of comes with the territory, but get involved at the least attend the meetings. You know, you want to know what decisions are being made in those meetings because they affect you and they affect your bottom line. You know, if they're talking about uh, raising fees, if they're talking about um, taking on, you know, re-roofing the community, all those things are going to add additional costs and are going to have an impact on you directly. So you want to know what's going on in the HOA meetings. Um, and again, if you have the time, get involved, sit on the board and ma help make those decisions that are best for not only your home, but at the community at large. So definitely they take that into consideration as you we talk about HOAs. One of the last things that I will touch on is um, a, a fairly new fee that's more required for um, new construction homes than for resale properties. But even if you are buying resale value, you may, you may uh, resell homes, you may have this cost that you need to know of ahead of time. And that's solar. You know, dealing with your solar panels that are on the roof, um, there may be an additional cost there. There may not only be a monthly fee, but there may be maintenance fees. Um, sometimes the solar can be already paid off, but then you still have to pay to service them. And so you want to know ahead of time, again, talk to your agent, get this information. Are there solar panels? Um, if so, where are they located? Who put them on? You know, you want to make sure the homeowner didn't just go up there and start sticking them to your roof. <laughs> you know, you want to make sure a contractor or a licensed company put those on. Um, and then you want to know, are there, are they paid off? You know, are there any maintenance fees, service fees? If they're not paid off, how much is the monthly fees? And so again, this is happening more and more with new construction because especially here in California, new construction homes are required to have solar panels. And so therefore there are additional costs with the new construction development. They will give you an opportunity to either pay for the solar upfront as a one-time fee or pay on a monthly basis. Your monthly basis is going to depend on how many panels are up, you know, things of that nature, what company. But typically you can expect about a hundred to two hundred dollars a month um, in solar to pay for solar as opposed to paying for it up front where it could be thousands of dollars. So take that into consideration. You know, as you're going about buying a new home, especially a new construction home, you know, do you have the money to just go ahead and pay the one time fee and, and take care of it and not have to worry about it? Or are you going to have a new monthly bill to pay for solar um, and make sure, you know, that that solar is taken care of and the maintenance and things of that nature are done um, in a timely manner? So definitely a question to ask as you think about solar, make sure that there's enough panels on there to take care of the home. Sometimes, again, you know, your state may have a requirement for the minimum amount that they have to put on, um, but it may not cover the amount of electricity and things that you guys use as a family moving into the place. So you want to ask questions about the solar, know what you're paying for, and know how often you need to pay for them. Those are just a few of the additional costs that may that you may have as a new homeowner, things to consider as you go from renting to owning, especially if you're going again from a, you know, an apartment situation to now owning a single family home, those costs um, may add up. And so you need to know about these additional costs, nothing to be afraid of, but you need to know ahead of time. You need to know what you're, what you're getting yourself into. It's more than just the mortgage. You know, you have these additional costs to make sure that your home value stays up and that you're taking care of your home over time. If you have any additional questions about some other costs that you've seen or you heard about and you don't know quite what they are, feel free to reach out to us. We'd love to chat with you and answer any questions that you may have. You can reach us on Instagram at Homeowner Prep and directly send us a message and we'd be um, happy to answer any questions that you have. I hope you got some great value from today's episode. We look forward to providing you some more great content next week. And until then, be blessed. I hope you got some value from today's episode. If you know someone who could benefit from hearing this show, be sure to share it with them. And if you're listening to the podcast, we'd love for you to drop us a review. We'd also love to hear from you if you have any questions. So reach out to us on Instagram at Homeowner Prep. Who knows, we may read your review and answer your question on one of our future shows.